Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily for Monday, July 22nd. I'm Greg Lawless alongside Jason Seguini. Got a new jacket. I got a new jacket and a new thumb protector. And a new thumb protector. That's what everybody needs when the week gets going. And it was a big weekend in MLS. So you might have needed a protector of some sort, considering the biggest talking point coming out of the weekend from the Real Salt Lake Sporting Kansas City game. Sporting won this one 2-1. to one. Ico Parra with a last-second header to win the game at Rio Tinto. But afterward, everybody was talking about the red card to Chris Winger and the refereeing. Jason, was this a, a deserved red card to Winger? Um, I think in a lot of games it is. I mean, when, when you go and you, you pull at an opponent who beat you, you're going to get a yellow card for it. It was his second. The problem in this game, in this situation, was that Uri Rosell had gotten away with a lot. He was on an early yellow card, and he had a couple fouls that very easily could have been that second yellow. He didn't get it. So when the away team doesn't get that, that close second yellow card, you don't think that the home team is going to get it in this situation. Well, there was also maybe talk even that Winger deserved a red for his initial foul on Kai Kamara, where he only got the yellow in that one. Now, one of the things coming into this was consistency. Jason Kreiss from RSL discussed the consistency of the refereeing for this one. He also discussed the inexperience or the relative inexperience of head referee Matt Forster saying, well, this is only his 16th game. Is that too few? Or what did that play into this really? Right. I mean, it was a good point. You're, you're going the two te top teams in the league going at it, supporter shield on the line. It's going to be as intense of a game as you can imagine. You want an experienced referee out there, a guy who's seen it a million times and done it a million times. Problem is, there aren't that many referees out there that are that experienced and that you trust, that are you know, the, the top guys that pro can put out there. So I look at it both ways. Yes, ideally there's a more experienced referee who could have done that game, but at the same time, you're trying to find the best referee at the moment, and maybe he was the best referee at the moment. Well, you also have to wonder if they had not given up that last second goal and lost this game, would there have <laughs> been as much rancor coming out of that? Hard to say in this one. We're going to move on to the LA Galaxy against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Greg, we're only touching on games here that had a winner. There were a lot of games this weekend that Four ended ties, in a tie. three of them 0-0 zero, zero, as a matter of fact. So Camilo gets Vancouver on the board early. That guy cannot stop scoring, but unfortunately for the Whitecaps, the LA Galaxy had a couple youngsters who made the difference. Yeah, it, it was Jose Villarreal who got the first one, and it was Jossi Zardes with an incredible goal to end up with the winner in the end for the Galaxy. This all bodes very well for the side as they move into the second half of the season because Robbie Keane didn't play in this one. Landon Donovan was off with the national team, so they're going to have to find other ways to score goals. And if Zardes can be the man, I particularly look at him a little bit more than Villarreal because of Zardes' size and I think his durability over the second half of the season. If he can be the man the way he was in this game, I think you've got a very potent weapon that they can use when Keane is maybe not on his game. Yeah, and it was, this was a great advertisement for the LA Galaxy Academy, yeah. having the young guys come in there, step into the starting lineup, and play in a big game and contribute. But how about Camilo? 13 goals now in the season, starting to pull away in the golden boot. He will be the first to tell you, Greg, the goals don't matter if you're not winning games. Well said. All right, moving over to the Eastern Conference. The New England Revolution got a big victory at Columbus. Remember, they had lost that game in Colorado in the midweek, coming back, bouncing back, getting two goals in stoppage time, including Diego Fagundes wrapping it up. I love Diego Fagundes. All he does is score goals. He gets out there, and that, he did it well, but it was uh, Jose Goncalves with the actual winner on the header. And the biggest result of the weekend in terms of scoring, Chicago 4-1 to one over DC United. United really struggling, although they do get a gorgeous goal from Luis Silva. His first goal of the season, in fact, and his first goal for DC. Yeah, unfortunately, if you're a DC fan, you're looking at that result and saying it's same old, same old. I think the one thing you look at with DC is they have a lot of pieces. They need to get the piece, all the pieces healthy at the same time, playing at the same time. But Chicago Fire, keep rolling. They do, and Chris Rolfe with two goals in this one. That bodes well for the Fire as they go forward because if he can get hot and show that scoring touch that we've seen in the past, this is a Fire team that's going to be very, very hard to beat. And they are pushing up towards that final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference as well. On Sunday with no MLS action, everyone turned their attention to the U.S. national team in the Gold Cup quarterfinals. And it was Landon Donovan, the catalyst for a 5-1 victory over El Salvador. Our very own Andrew Wiebe was at the stadium. 
Thanks, guys. Obviously, the massive story here in Baltimore is the continued dominance of Landon Donovan. This was his chance to prove he belongs on those World Cup qualifying teams, and he has done nothing short of forcing Jurgen Klinsmann's hand. Three goals and six assists so far in the Gold Cup. A goal and three assists on the night here against El Salvador. He even had a hand in another goal. Joe Corona is the second of the game for the U.S. He was dominant 1v1. He was dominant on the dribble, and nobody on this U.S. team has a better eye for the final. Ball. The big question at this point, where would he play in that A team? Jurgen Klinsmann will have to make that decision, but it seems as though Landon Donovan has forced his hand ahead of qualifiers against Costa Rica and Mexico. Thanks, Andrew. The U.S. now going on to the semifinals. They'll take on Honduras. Honduras getting a 1-0 victory over Costa Rica thanks to Andy Nahar, former D.C. United player. Check out Gold Cup today later on this afternoon on MLSsoccer.com. Sam Yarick and Simon Borg will have all you need to know about the U.S.'s win and what they're looking forward to against Honduras. Well, that's it for the Daily here. For Jason, I'm Greg. Make sure you also look out for the Extra Time Radio podcast later this afternoon on MLSsoccer.com. And don't forget to vote for the AT&T Goal of the Week.